Welcome to Field Sports Britain, full of meaty goodness. Coming up, Andy is killing two birds, sorry, rats, with one stone, sorry, stick. He's clearing his barn of straw and rodents at the same time. Whose dog is that, I hear you ask? Well, if you want to avoid the answer, yours, sir, watch our top gun dog training tips from Skinner's Pet Foods. We've got new stump, hunting YouTube, and an extraordinary Hello Charlie from Scotland. Aye. First, Subaru is about to launch its new Forester, but is the original crossover still fit for farmyards and off-road forays? Well, sporting shooter editor and ace Motoring journalist Dom Holtam goes deer stalking in the Lake District to find out. When Dom was given the chance to test drive the new Subaru Forester up north, we all thought it would be a good excuse to take it out on our proper Field Sports Britain outing. So instead of going for a pleasant drive in the country with lines like, if this car were a sheep, it would be producing knitted woolly jumpers, we're taking it off the beaten track onto a beaten up farm to reach the start of a hill stalking day in the Lake District. We're after a cull red stag with our old friend Cumbrian deer stalker Jonathan Standing. First, Dom needs to get his rifle zeroed. Shooting up here is not recommended for the novice. The strong crosswinds are a big problem and although Dom has stalked with Jonathan for years, both of them need to know the rifle is shooting true. So as always when the rifle's been in the back of the car and we just got here, um, just want to make sure that the rifle's still on zero. So Jonathan's brought us out to, to check that we can uh, we can still hit the paper and uh, then makes you a bit more confident when we do go out on the hill that hopefully the rifle's doing its thing and any mistakes are down to me and not down to a problem with the gun. So we're just gonna have three shots and uh, just hopefully make sure that everything's okay. We'll leave them to it and back to the Forester. At its launch back in 1997, you may recall it found favour with farmers and farmers' wives, husbands and live-in lovers alike. These days, everyone needs a car like this just to survive the potholes. But has this tough old boot, now in its fourth generation, gone soft? In many ways, the original Subaru Forester came to define what we now call the crossover genre. Crossover, it's not quite a car, it's not quite a proper off-roader. It's somewhere between the two, it's a pumped-up estate car. And in the case of the Forester, it was tough, it was reliable, it had a proper four-wheel drive system, it was built to take punishment, and it found favour with farmers and families all over the world. Case in point, this is David the cameraman's car. It's led a very tough life, chasing field sports Britain stories all around the UK. He's got kids, it's been dealt with as a farm vehicle, and it's survived. It's still going strong, 135,000 miles, still great. But the market's changed, it's moved on. Crossover vehicles are not a rarity anymore. They are everywhere, from urban vehicles all the way through to slightly more serious stuff. So the new Subaru Forester has got a much tougher segment in which to compete. And this is it. As you can see, just looking at the two together, it's much taller, it's much chunkier, it's got much more road presence. It's got the new kind of Subaru corporate face, if you like, with the big badge big lights, plenty of ride height. It's also demanding to have a lot more luxury in this sector. So whereas before you could get away with a vehicle that was quite utilitarian, these days it needs to have sat nav, it needs to have electrics, it needs to have controls on the steering wheels, it needs to have iPod connectivity. Another big change for this generation of Forester is that it's now got the next generation of the Boxer diesel engine. The original Forester, petrol only. Yes, you can have a turbo, which is great fun, but you couldn't have a diesel. This does. It's a flat fourth configuration, as Subaru made famous, much more efficient, much smoother, and it means that it's more practical as a family proposition. The country up here is just beautiful. Better viewed on foot than in a vehicle. The last time we were here was with American huntress Pam Zeitz. Dom and Jonathan scan the hillside and the dots in the distance do appear to be deer. They aren't going to come to us, so we've got to go to them. I think Jonathan's taken one look at that hill and one look at my beer belly and he, he doesn't fancy my chances very much. So we're going to head out onto the, onto the open hill and, and just have a scan around and see what we can see. Um, but sadly, even with the, for, the forester's ability, it's not going to make it up there. So we need something a little bit more serious. The conditions are blowy to say the least. The stalking team stop and scan as they ascend. There's no point heading off blindly. Yeah, it's moving across the face. It's moving across the face. Yesterday was t-shirt weather back down south and uh, 
we seem to have travelled back about four months and it feels like December and January again up here. There's still a bit of snow on the ground, but the main concern is this wind is absolutely howling in over the tops and where it's going up and down the valleys, it's hard to predict exactly which direction it's going to blow in where the deer are. Um, but we've picked up another group, they're directly opposite us and they're, they're kind of moving along the face, trying to keep in, in a bit of shelter. So I'm just going to monitor them and see where they end up. They need to spot a target and work towards it as stealthily as they can. Eventually, Jonathan finds some likely customers. A slight movement catches his eye and more careful study reveals a herd of eight animals. This is where the fun begins and where careful preparation for this environment is vital. Not just fitness, but kit too. They crawl, they walk, they try and get a breath. They crawl some more and more. Once you're wet, you're wet and you just get on with it. Jonathan is fantastic at reading the deer, knowing when to move his clients, when to hold. I think more like sausage rolls, David. Normally, when I'm that low to the ground, I'm asleep. After 45 minutes, the first chance of a shot is at a young red stag calf, but they bounce over the ridge. Jonathan is now keener than ever to get onto these animals as one of the hinds looks sick. Even though the hind season is over, many have perished with the severe winter and he wants her shot. This time, Dom is in position and happy. That's the exit, isn't it? Oh. That's the exit. The 235 metre shot strikes the hind well and a heart shot puts her down. On closer inspection, Jonathan knows he's made the right call. We picked this hind out because it was the poorest one in the herd and now we've shot it. We can see why there's no flesh on its back at all. Its backbone's showing right along, so it was a, it's a good one to take. It is, yeah. Probably might even die in the next couple of weeks, might this. It's just made it through the winter. You say this, where we've had this prolonged cold spell through, yeah. through into March, it, it, it's put extra pressure on them because this does. is the time of year when they're vulnerable, isn't it? It is, and often they don't die in the winter, they'll die when the spring comes. Uh, yeah, they do, you know. Yep, this is when you get your losses this, this time of year. All that needs to be done now is get her back to the Polaris, which is a very long way away. However, that's not the end of Dom's day. A single red hind with an injured leg gets up on the walk back to the cars. Jonathan asks Dom to get onto her. It wasn't moving very well at all, was it? She's down, and on closer inspection, she has a broken leg, but incredibly is a far healthier looking animal than the first. It was, it was on its own. It got up out of these reeds, and it just didn't want to go anywhere, Jonathan, did it? No. Which is, you know, normally they see, uh, well, as we know from earlier, as soon as they catch any sight of you, they want to be away. Yeah. Whereas this, this one just, just didn't. And he stood there looking and looking, and, you know, Jonathan... Jonathan, as soon as he saw it moving, you could see that something went right and it's got a bad break to the front leg. Yeah. Um, didn't want to go up the hill, didn't want to get away, stood there looking and looking and unfortunately that gave us time to get the rifle out and, uh, and get a shot in it. Yeah. Even, even having said that, look at the size of the beast and the condition of it compared to the other one that we shot earlier. You know, this is it's in much better physical nick. Obviously it's worrying when you see one like that on its own, not wanting to move, so. What a stalk. Not what we'd hoped, but stalking up here is a different beast for all sorts of reasons. As always, welfare, welfare of the animals the first. is paramount, it is, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, you may be after one thing, but um, something else dictates to you uh, a different plan for the day, which we did today, really. Yeah, yeah. so I'll just have to wait another time to get my stag. You will, I'm afraid. <laughs> yeah, 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 um, the day didn't go as we planned, you know, yeah, yeah. But it, it, 
turned out a good day in the end really we've stopped any animals suffering on the hill yeah and, uh, which is which is good all everyone needs to do now is dry off and get some shots of the Subaru before it gets too late. We've been on the hill far longer than expected. Yes, the new Subaru Forester has to compete with the likes of the Qashqais, the Cougars and the Tiguans of this world. Yes, they also have good ground clearance and some even have four-wheel drive. But it's like comparing hill stalking for Reds with woodland stalking for Muntjac. The new soft raiders, Potter whereas the Forester still has the core strength to stride. Dom looking comfortable behind the wheel and the rifle there. And if you want to see more of Dom's reviews of vehicles from supercars to SUVs to UTVs, click on the screen that's appeared in the tree behind me there. Now for our very own Rough Rider, it's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Britain News. Another hunting case has collapsed. The prosecution against the joint master and huntsman of the Western and Banwell Harriers, George Milton, was thrown out by magistrates in Taunton, who said Mr Milton had no case to answer. The League Against Cruel Sports has spent more than £2 million of charitable donations on investigations since 2010, yet has achieved no successful Hunting Act prosecutions as a result of his activities in the past two hunting seasons. While some American states are cracking down on legal gun ownership, others have had a dose of common sense by cracking down on the use of drones used to film fishermen and hunters. The animal rights body PETA is threatening to use drones, but an Illinois government committee has endorsed a proposal to criminalise the use of drones to interfere with someone's hunting and fishing. Meanwhile, in Malta, bird rights activists from BirdLife International are watching the island's 9,500 hunters to make sure they just shoot quail and turtle doves. In this video by Malta Today, the journalist listens unquestioning as a BirdLife member reels off a list of other birds he claims hunters have shot at. The antis are angry because the Maltese government has ruled that shooters do not have to wear identifying fluorescent armbands. Here's a more heartwarming story which you can help with. Gamekeeper's daughter Linny Bignall wants a new set of wheels. Glanuska State's head keeper Steve Bignall is raising funds to purchase an off-road wheelchair for his eight-year-old daughter Lily. He's holding a charity clay shoot on the 9th of June at the estate. Look for Lily's new wheels on Facebook. More on the Keeper's Mate blog, keepersmate.co.uk forward slash blog. And finally, a Hawaiian fisherman had a close encounter with a nine-foot shark as it jumped out of the water close to his kayak. 37-year-old Isaac Brumagim was fishing off the coast of Hawaii when the shark sprung up and bit the tuna he was trying to catch. As well as being shocked and scared by the experience, he said he was extremely annoyed that the shark had taken his fish. You are now up to date with Field Sports Britain News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Not looking as crucial as me, though, are you? Now, coming up, we have dogs attacking rats. First, we have game birds attacking Scotsmen. From around the world, it's Hello Charlie. Here's what the world's up to this week. Hi, Charlie. It's Andy here. I'm filming uh, Copper Kelly, a wild bugger. And he's attacking me in the camera. Aye. You'll have to cut that. I've never have ever seen anything like this before. I'm cornered next to a tree. Looking forward to your next show. Cheers for now. Hello Charlie, it's Andy here from North Warwickshire. And today I'm out and about with my young Springer Meg. And we're doing some stock whistle and recall work. Send us your own Hello Charlie, film yourself on your mobile phone, just a sentence saying Hello Charlie, who you are and what you're up to. Then share it or email it via YouTube, Facebook, Dropbox or you send it, you name it, to charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. There's a certain person who has been obvious by his absence in the past few weeks. He's been off to warmer climbs, parading his budgie smugglers around the pool and working off his tight buns. Who writes this stuff? on the farm. Well, he's back this week, not with pigeons, but with fast action terrier work on rats. It is Andy, the Crowman Crow. 
Andy has had a few problems with rats this year. When the guys laying the concrete in his new barn broke the door, it was an open invitation for the local Rattus Norvegicus population to overwinter in straw destined for the burner. Air rifles have taken care of a few of them. Andy's fancy footwork others. Today the question is going to be who let the dogs out? Who, 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 who? First of all, where's he been? We've missed you, Andy. Where was I last month? Um... I was here, I expect, fertilising or something. Gambia. Oh, I was Gambia, that's right, yeah, I was fishing in Gambia. But I had to pay for that, you get yours paid for, including flights. Anyway, end of. That's where I've been, I've been flat out doing field work. I'm all up together now, so the plan is we're going to extend the wall over there with um, some more grain walling so they've got further to run. We're going to blank it off at the back, either side, but um, I've got a bit of moving about to do, so if I get that done, um, you can have a chat with John. He's Mate of mine, he's brought his terriers along. Inside the barn, Andy is creating what looks like a five-a-side football pitch. If things go right, we can expect a few rats to come charging down the wing. John owns the dogs. They are all shapes and sizes, so what makes a good ratter? Boldness. One that doesn't back off. And these, these have been at it for, this one's 12 now, so she's been at it for a long, long time. But they're, they're, just, they're just keen. Come here, stay. So what do you think about rats? Um, I quite like them, to be quite honest. I've got a great respect for them. They're world survivors. You, you can have them in a cold store where they grow along the fur coat. You can have it as in Andes in the grain store. Plenty of food, which they would then breed to, um, breed to the food source. Midge! They breed to the food source. If it's a shortage of food, then they won't. Oh, sorry. John is no stranger to cameras. A few years ago, he appeared on a BBC documentary with Martin Clunes looking at different dog breeds and their roles. The film also featured a young crow. So how was Doc Martin with the ratting? After the initial shock, um, yeah, he warmed to the, warmed to the task, I say. With the arena coming together, word is spreading and we have a reasonable team building. Andy Jr. is up aloft, directing traffic. Three with sticks and five hounds. Contestants ready. Gladiators ready. Let's start moving those bales. With half the bales gone, things start livening up. The rats are starting to run out of space and we get some screamers. Richard intercepts this one just before hitting the camera. Then the dogs run out of space. Andy even leaves the cab for a bit of goalkeeping. He steps in and blocks the runners and the dogs and sticks do the rest. Let's see that again. A great team effort there. It really does start to get frantic. Sticks waving, dogs running and chewing and eating. Ah, no accounting for taste. It's wall-to-wall -wall action with the dogs doing well. Even the youngster gets his first rat. It really is built into the DNA with these dogs. I was expecting a lot more than that. Uh, there's a small hole that goes into the um, walling up the side there, uh, up the centre. Um, partition up the middle there, there's a small hole in that, so we've lost quite a few in there, which is a bit of a pain, but hopefully you've got a bit of footage, but I was hoping, like I said, I was hoping for a few more, but every dead rat's a good one, so. Um, it's bloody exciting, isn't it? Yeah, it is exciting stuff, yeah, we, we've got, there's several nests of youngsters we've got as well, and we've got seven or eight in some of those, and I think there was about five or six, five or six lots. Dom, I love you. Doesn't he? Late. I didn't realise it was going to be such an event to be honest. I've never seen this much excitement on the farm, it's amazing. Nor have I. Nor I've never have seen I. Andy drive a flipping load of that fast either. <laughs> Normally takes him about two days to move that many bales. Even though Andy says he's disappointed, it's been great fun. Yeah, it was brilliant. Proper good. Good dogs. Know what they're doing. He did very well, very pleased with them. First time. Missed a couple myself, but he got them, so that's okay. The minute you see that first rat run out, that's it. All the, all the ambition's going, that's it. All you want to do is chase after it and uh, get there before the dog, really. But unfortunately, the dog gets there before us. They think it's all over, except John, who is trying to smoke out the escapees. But he's had a blast too. It doesn't matter how many times you do it, it still, yeah, it still gets your adrenaline going. 
And as you can see, the dogs don't need any encouragement at all. Ratting, a great method of vermin control and as good as a five-a-side kickabout any day. Now from Terriers to, dare I say it, better bred dogs. All you gun dog owners out there, anyone for tennis? Many people say you should always take a tennis ball and a racket when you go for a walk with your gun dog. It is, they insist, a perfect training opportunity. Top gun dog trainer Howard Kirby has lots more to say on the subject of tennis balls. We need our spaniels, all of our dogs really, to enter cover in order to find game with a retriever to go and retrieve it, with a spaniel to go and flush it and get in there. So we make the game enjoyable. We roll a tennis ball into soft cover, not too harsh cover at this stage, otherwise there's a danger you frighten him. If he gets too many prickles in his face, he might not want to go in there again. So it's a gradual build up again. What we did was we put a ball in the cover. We just encouraged the dog to hunt. We did what we call clicked him off. I made a noise to indicate it. I want you to start hunting. I said, right, where is it then? And then he starts to hunt. And gradually over a period of months, he gets familiar with that command and he goes, oh, there must be something for me to find. So he starts to hunt, blow me, he finds a tennis ball. What happens, he goes, my dad's really great because every time he tells me to hunt, I find a tennis ball. So if he tells me to hunt, I'm going to do it every time. That's the secret. And we build that up so the dog hunts for longer with less um, aids from you, he gets more powerful, he'll hold an area and enter cover and uh, pick it up. What we also did there, as soon as he's picked it, of course he's got to come out, deliver it to hand, so he comes out and retrieves, delivers the bird or ball to hand. We then develop that exercise up because more often than not, a spaniel will be used for flushing, not for retrieving out of cover so much. So he goes in to um, cover where there is no ball. Bear in mind we've conditioned him. When they say start hunting, he starts hunting. So while he's hunting, I flick a ball in the air, we fire a pretend shot, bang, or we fire a starting pistol, and we're starting to simulate the whole process, the process that he'll go through on live game in the future. So we're teaching him to sit to the flush, look, and then when we say get out, he'll go out and retrieve the bird. Howard runs Mullinscoat Gun Dogs from Lane's Shooting School near Andover in Hampshire. Visit mullinscoat.co.uk. This series on gun dog training tips is brought to you by Skinner's Pet Foods, maker of the field and trial range of gun dog feeds. Visit skinnerspetfoods.co.uk. From gun dogs, let's go all kitty. It's Kit Special. Kit Special this week looks again at popular sporting guns on the gunsdirect.co.uk website. Which ones are getting the most views from you, the viewers? The answer is that it's kits, combos and starter sets. You can have a Ruger Ranch Complete Kit for £595.50. This used Ruger Ranch Mini 14 in 223 straight pull bolt action comes complete with extra 20 round mag bracket and stud for a bipod sling scope and rings included. Ruger introduced the Mini 14 in 1974 and rebranded it as one of its ranch rifles in 2003. One of Steyr Mandlicker's fabulous, superbly ergonomic, stunningly ugly scout rifles is for sale on Guns Direct at £750. This 308 bolt action with T8 scout reflex suppressor and Apple mounts, £180 new, is included in the price. With a reputation for being considerably more accurate than the Mini 14, it's just that this lightweight all-round rifle, as specified in Jeff Cooper's scout rifle concept, would probably cause more death from embarrassment than terminal ballistics. For under £150, this Hamley Black Force 800 air rifle is a perfect starter gun for young shooters and those who are new to the sport. It comes with a 6x40 scope and chills the hearts of European air gun manufacturers because it was built in China. All those who dismissed Hamley saying you can't get the parts are now finding you don't need the parts. That's it, feast your eyes, fish into your pockets. Thanks for watching. This is Kid Special. Now for the wider world of hunting on YouTube, it is of course Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting, shooting and fishing videos that YouTube has to offer. Eight films, eight different species. First up, Christopher Clausen is after beaver in Norway. Christopher is a professional hunter and Norway's greatest producer of hunting films. Crossing to Belarus, a French hunter is on a driven wild boar day. Not sure whether the Frenchman or his backing music is more savage. Still, despite the dark sense of foreboding, he seems to be having a nice time. And there's not too much talking. From 
Ireland, Hunter Tom 365 offers the ideal duck shooting moment. Mallard Double has him bringing down a right and a left at duck, plus a nice mark and retrieve by his Springer Spaniel. Now a reasonably big budget film for YouTube. Monster Hunt Baron's Sea Scry shows Nordic sea angling guide Johan Mickelson and angling company expert David Tormar of Fairpoint after Scry, the Norwegian word for cod. The Barents Sea north of Norway is sea angling's El Dorado. Moving to only slightly more forgiving waters, fly fishing Colorado in the USA is RM Flyfisher's early season outing after trout. Finally got out to do some great fishing. You should too, he says. Now let's go down under. We featured him before and I expect we will feature him again. Andrew Uckles, or is that Andrew Uckles, is the Australian sensation whose clips from Discovery Channel include novel techniques for catching animals. In this film, he is catching rabbits with snakes. Thanks to many viewers for sending in this. Back in the UK and a fairly thoughtful film about squirrel shooting. Squirrel hunting compilation Four Squirrels in Three Days shows Squirrel Hunter and his brother doing exactly that. And finally, I always love to see YouTube channels getting together. In Mega Airgun Rat Hunt 250 to 300 Rats in One Night by Country Pursuits TV, Malcolm and Lisa team up with Ken, Paul and Stuart from KPS Hunters and Cy and Davey from Vermin Hunters TV and the ratting is mega. You can click on any of these films to watch them if you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top 8, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv Now the CLA Game Fair is not only on the horizon but hoving into view. If you want to find out what's going on at Ragley Hall 2013 click on the screen behind me. Now this program is back next week. If you are watching this on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button that's somewhere as usual around the outside of the screen. And if I've got time, I'll put a link on the screen or go to our webpage, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. There's another link just there, if I get around to it. Or scroll down to the bottom and you can pop your email address into the constant contact form and we will be in touch with you about our program that's out 7 p.m. UK time every Wednesday. This has been Field Sports Britain. And I have to ask, what am I wearing?